Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all really well. Grab yourself a cup of tea because in today's video I am going to talk about a few tips for starting university and getting through your first year. It's that time of year when people are going off to uni and as I have done university three times with varying successes, um, I thought I would just try and pass on a few tips that I have picked up along the way um, to kind of get me through and hopefully help you to get through that first, like getting into uni and that first year. Um, I, just so you know a little bit about my experiences, um, I first went to university straight after college. I moved away, went to Portsmouth Uni and I stayed for a just over a term and a half um, but it just didn't work out. I then did the Open University for quite a few years and then more recently I stayed at home and went to a local university and that one did work out and I graduated last summer? I think it was last summer, I don't know, I've lost track. Last summer I think. So I've done kind of <laughs> university in all its different kind of ways um, and I just hope that some of my tips will help you if you're heading off going into your first year and you're not quite sure what to do, what to expect, um, hopefully some of my tips might give you a bit of a helping hand. So the first thing that I would really recommend is before you go learn to do like the basic things like washing, using a tumble dryer, um, cooking some sort of like basic meals, ironing if you're going to be doing ironing although to be fair I don't think I ever did any ironing when I went to uni um, but any of those things that you may not usually be doing at home I think it's just a really good idea to get your mum or your dad or whoever it is at home to tell you how to work a washing machine or you know to pick up some like basic meal prep suggestions um, I know when I went away to Portsmouth everything was a massive learning curve because I don't know like I did bits and bobs at home but all of a sudden you're like out on your own and you've got to do all these like new like life skill things and if I hadn't kind of learned a little bit before I went away I think I would have found it even more overwhelming. Obviously you know your washing, your washing machine and everything are going to be a bit different but the basics are still there so definitely just try and pick up a few skills before you go so that when you get there you're not kind of completely out of your depth. So when you go off to university usually you are sent like a list of textbooks that you might need um, and I would really just recommend just buy the textbooks that you are absolutely definitely going to need. They can be ridiculously expensive and I remember like I think it was when I went to Portsmouth we got a long old list and it had like some that it was like yes you definitely need these and then it had a long list of others that it was like well you might need these and some people had literally gone out and bought all of them and spent hundreds and hundreds of pounds and you know never used half of them so I would say buy the ones that you're told like you have to have these ones if you want to buy second hand if you can that's always really helpful a lot of like people that have kind of gone into the year above might be selling um, like their secondhand textbooks and they'll be a hell of a lot cheaper. I know there are some courses that you have to have new from so I did law when I went to um, like my local university as part of my journalism degree and we did have to have new textbooks for them because um, like laws and things change all the time but if you don't need to have brand new definitely just go for second hand and only buy those ones that they're saying that you absolutely need because certainly I bought a few textbooks and I never ended up using them and it was such a waste of money um, so just buy the ones that you need you've got the library so you know the textbook's going to be in there um, there may be a way like if all of a sudden you've got an assignment coming up and everyone wants one of those textbooks okay you might have to wait a bit but just like plan ahead but yeah just don't don't go and spend hundreds and thousands of pounds on textbooks that you're probably never going to look at my next tip is definitely one that is easier said than done but I would really recommend not overpacking and you know I'm maybe not the best person to say this because when I went away to Portsmouth I definitely overpacked. I took so much stuff with me and because I left, um, so I left in about February time I think it was and oh my goodness like my dad came down with our big car and we really struggled to fit everything in um i've seen some people like hire out vans to get, like take all their stuff down to uni and you just don't need it or you just you don't need it all at once just take like the things that you think you're gonna need obviously i would say 
make sure that your room is going to feel homely and comfortable because when you're starting to feel homesick and stuff you want your home comforts around you but god some of the stuff I took like it just it sat under my bed doing nothing um and you know like most of the time you're not too far away from home so that if you think actually I could do with like this this and this you know you can either get your parents to send it down or bring it down or when you go home one time you can bring it back another time um, and it just yeah it definitely saves space and and when you're sort of packing up at the end of the year or in some universities you have to move out of your um, room like every term the last thing you want is to have like piles and piles of stuff that you've got to like try and transport because like certainly like at Christmas say I my parents didn't come down and get me I went back on the train so I you know I couldn't take a huge amount of stuff back with me and actually I needed stuff back at home as well because I didn't want to keep having to move things between the two places so yeah just just try your very very hardest not to overpack I know it's hard you want to make it feel like home but I think you will thank me in the long run. A tip that I was given when I first went down to Portsmouth is that when you initially move in, keep your bedroom door open um, and basically anyone that's like walking past is more likely to like pop their head around and say hello. Um, and I did this actually when I when I first moved in. I kept, I put like a, got a little door stop, opened my door and then I was like moving stuff in and my other flatmates were starting to come in and they would like say hello and you just get to know people a bit better rather than like closing yourself away in your room which I know is quite tempting especially if you're quite an anxious person like I am or if you're more of an introvert but you know having the doors open everyone did it pretty much and yeah we just got talking a lot more quickly and yeah you just start to like get to know like the faces that are going to be around you so I would definitely recommend it's such a little thing to do but I think it definitely made a difference for me so once you're at uni I would definitely suggest like trying to socialise as much as you can during freshers. You don't have to go overboard, there is a lot on during freshers so you know pick the things that you think that you're going to enjoy because then you're more likely to meet the kinds of people that you're going to like click with but yeah I think the worst thing that you can do in freshers is to you know shut yourself away in your room and not go out because you're not going to then meet anybody you don't have to go out like clubbing and everything all the time because there's so many different activities that universities put on so just have a look see what's on and try and like put yourself out there a bit and yeah get to know get to know other people i would also really recommend getting involved in like societies and clubs usually um in most universities during freshers week there will be like a big freshers fair um, and that is when all the like societies and clubs come together and basically advertise themselves so that you know what's going on. It can be a bit overwhelming, all of a sudden you've got all this choice and it's like where do I start? Um, but definitely getting involved in some societies and some clubs and things really helped me to so like start to make friends get to know other people that perhaps aren't on your course and also you tend to like meet more like-minded people in the societies and clubs that you choose to go to so give it a go if it's something you've never done before like when I went to Portsmouth I joined the cricket club and I had never played cricket before it's not something that had ever appealed to me really um, but they had a women's cricket club which often like collaborated with the men's and it was a bit of fun and it was a really good chance to like meet other people from different year groups um, and just to socialise and you like already had like this ready-made group of people to kind of hang out with which was quite nice. So I would say although I'm like saying it's really good to go out and socialise and to do different things it's also really important not to feel pressurised to do things that you're not comfortable with. Um, certainly like when I went to university, it's such a different environment and you really want to like fit in and make friends and feel part of stuff. Um, but I definitely went and did things that I wasn't, it just, I just wasn't happy with. It wasn't stuff that I would have perhaps chosen to do if I'd been like at home and things like that. I mean, the obvious things are things like drugs because you will possibly come into contact with drugs. Um, drinking, a lot of people go into like excessive drinking during freshers and getting really, really drunk. And if that's not for you, just you don't have to do it just to fit in. Um, I, I drank a bit during freshers, but I didn't go overboard. I don't think I ever got particularly drunk. Um, I was quite happy drinking like soft drinks and then the odd like alcoholic drink and it just made 
or it made me feel more comfortable. No one really batted an eyelid. Sometimes you'd get the odd comment about like not drinking, but it didn't really bother me to be honest. And I think not drinking is getting more popular these days. So, you know, if you don't want to go out and get absolutely paralytic, then please don't feel like you have to. Um, also, you know, if you don't want to go out all night, go and find something else to do. You know, it's not just all about like the clubbing. There are plenty of other like activities and things that you can be doing during the day or, you know, quieter activities. And if that's what you prefer to do, then go for that. Don't feel like you have to fit the stereotype of being like a new student going out and getting drunk. Um, and yeah, if you don't, if there's clubs that people are trying to press you to join that you really don't fancy, or if there's a club that you really do fancy, just go with what you want. Don't feel pressure to fit in because you will eventually, you know, if you make the decisions that feel comfortable to you, you'll start to find your own kind of group of people. So yeah, just don't feel pressurised. I know it's hard, but just try and be true to yourself and don't do things that you wouldn't have done like if you weren't at uni. I would also say like as time goes on or even in the first couple of weeks of freshers, don't feel like you have to go out all the time. There's definitely this big pressure on, you know, going to all these parties and clubbing and getting drunk and all these kind of things. But it's more than okay to like have a day off just to have a bit of like chill out time. I know like certainly when I got into like the swing of university a bit more, um, I would do like pizza nights with my friends or we'd watch a DVD, we'd go to the cinema, um, we'd go bowling, go and play mini golf, like things like that that were just a little bit different, that were a bit quieter. Um, you know, you don't have to be going like out, out all the time. Um, and also if you just want like an evening on your own, then that's absolutely fine as well. Don't feel like you have to be out every night because it gets to the point where you're just totally exhausted and I don't know you may have heard of freshers flu um, a lot of people get ill like during freshers and I think a big part of that is just because people are on the go all the time feeling like they have to be you know doing stuff all the time so just pace yourself a bit and you know if you want to have an evening in just watching a DVD or having a pizza with a couple of your friends then you know go for it just don't feel like you constantly have to be out plus it will also save you money as well which is like always a good thing so when I went away to Portsmouth and was living away from home for the first time one of the things that I struggled with the most was living with a group of people that I hadn't really chosen, well I hadn't chosen, you get put in this flat with people you don't know and you all of a sudden go from like living at home with people that you know and you know each other's like routines and you know things are kept quite clean and tidy and things like that to going and living with a group of other like young adults who all of a sudden everyone's away from home and you kind of I suppose testing the limits so people might be like partying all night and it'd be really loud your kitchen might be an absolute mess which mine was and what I would say is that you can't control your flatmates and just to prepare for that really um I did find it really hard to start with I would say though if you can try and communicate with each other um I know it's difficult and it depends how well you get on together I know some people have like more success with this than others um but it can be really helpful to just communicate, you know, if the kitchen's an absolute mess because they, like, a couple of your flatmates aren't washing up, talk to them and say, look, can you please, like, clean up after yourself because I can't use the kitchen because it's an absolute mess, I can't cook for myself. Um, I think communication is definitely, like, the best thing, but you will also need to learn how to compromise, you know, it's maybe not going to be as clean as your mum keeps it at home. Um, so, you know, you've got to like set your expectations, I suppose, but talking to them and if you're really struggling, um, certainly when I was at Portsmouth, we had um, people that like looked after the halls and you could go and talk to them and they would do things like little meetings with your flat to help you communicate with each other and to help you like get over any issues. Um, so kind of look and see what is available and if you're struggling with the flat that you're living in you can sometimes move flats so if you're really really not getting on with your flatmates or they're all really really loud and you need to like have a bit more sleep they might be able to move you to somewhere that's a bit quieter so 
yeah I would say compromise communicate and if you're really still struggling go and talk to somebody and see if there's anything that you can kind of do to change things Another really important thing to do when you are going to uni for the first time is to register with a local doctor. Um, I didn't do this to start with, I thought oh I'll just wait, I'll just wait and then I got really unwell, um, I started having a lot of problems with my mental health. I hadn't registered with a doctor so as well as struggling with my mental health I then had to go and like go through the whole thing of trying to find a doctor and registering when really I just wanted to make an appointment and go and speak to somebody. So I would say like in your first couple of weeks go and find your local doctor and register with them so that if if you ever need them, you know they're there, you can just go and get an appointment without having to then go through all the registration stuff. Right, so you have made it through your freshers weeks and I would then say, you know, things start getting like real, you start having to go to lectures and things like that. And I would just say, make sure you attend your lectures. It is so easy to think, oh, I'm just gonna skip this one. Or like you've had a heavy night the night before and suddenly you think, I just don't wanna get up and go to my lecture. But if you can try and attend your lectures you're paying for your course and we kind of when i was at um, my last university i think one day we tried to work out like how much you would pay for each lecture and actually it's quite a lot of money so you know if you're missing a lecture you're wasting the money that you're paying basically but also you know the reason you've gone to uni yes it's nice to go out and like socialize and party and all that kind of stuff but the main reason you're at uni is to learn and to get a degree so make the most of what your university are like providing you um and you know if you start skipping lectures you're going to start getting behind and believe me Getting behind at university is completely different to getting behind in school. You haven't got teachers that are like giving you a kick up the bum and telling you to get on with it and stuff like that. Like it's down to you. Um, so just make the most of those lectures, those seminars, your tutorials and wherever you can make sure you go to them because they're there for a reason, you're there for a reason and you just don't want to get to like halfway through your first year and think, oh God, I've missed so much, I don't know what I'm doing and the more you miss the harder it gets so yeah if you can go to your lectures so if you've moved away for university i know there's like a lot going on at your uni and there's plenty to keep you occupied but i would say get to know the area that you're living in um i've had kind of varying experiences of this i suppose so when i first went to portsmouth it is a city university so basically it's in the middle of the city there's different um, buildings like all over the place so it makes it a bit easier to start to learn like where you are because you have to like move around the city to go to your different lectures and stuff but even even then like after like the freshest thing had like died down my friends and I used to do things like going down to Gunwolf Keys or going down to the seaside or going to like the like city centre and things and just looking around and seeing like what is available because you don't want to like limit yourself to your university you want to like really feel like where you are is like home um when i lived at home for like the last one the last uni that i went so my university was in farnham and to be honest i live quite close to farnham but i'd never really like experienced it much before um so although i was living at home i tried to make sure that i still got out into farnham and had a look around and found out what there was like found out what bars and restaurants and things there were to see and it just makes you feel i think a little bit more like secure in the place you're at because it starts to feel like a second home so definitely make the most of the place you're living in go and see the sites go out with your friends to do things and yeah before long like my family would often be coming like to Portsmouth and I'd be showing them around and doing stuff with them and it's just nice to feel yeah like it's a second home. My next tip and this can pretty much see you all the way through uni is don't be scared to ask for help. To begin with at uni I was quite like of the thinking that I'm an adult now like I'm meant to know how to do everything um you know I can't go and ask my teachers for help or anything and actually that's so not true like your tutors and your lecturers are there because they want to help you they want to help you get a degree so if you're struggling with something you know if you're struggling with some content or if you're getting a bit behind go and speak to them tell them that you're like finding it hard and they will be usually more than happy to help you 
also like talk to your fellow students because everybody's in the same boat and it might seem like everyone else is coping but if you sort of say to somebody oh I'm finding this really hard like nine times out of ten you'll probably find someone else that's finding it hard as well so don't deal with things alone also go and check out your student support services universities pretty much I'm pretty sure every university has student support services so whether you have a disability a mental health condition whether you're struggling with accommodation whether you're finding like problems with your finances anything there is someone there that can help you so make the most of that support go and reach out for it don't suffer in silence because I think certainly when I was at Portsmouth that is one of the reasons why I ended up dropping out because I didn't reach out for support in time um, and I wish I had so yeah just definitely you know admit to whoever it is find a tutor find a lecturer that you get on with tell them that you're struggling with something and you'll feel so much better because you'll have someone else on your side to try and help you through it and kind of linked in with that one I would say if you are falling behind make sure you talk to your tutor or your lecturer early on don't let it spiral out of control so if you're falling a bit behind and you just think I am getting really overwhelmed I don't know what I'm doing I don't know how to catch up go and speak to them and tell them that because they'd much rather you did that than for you to not speak to them and for it to get worse and worse and worse and it to come to like the exams or whatever at the end of the year and suddenly they realize that you are completely out of your depth they'd much rather help you earlier on because they know that you know uni is very different to going to school and they know that people are going to struggle with it and that's what they're there for they're there to try and help you through it so yeah don't let it spiral don't let it go too long go and speak to someone early and just say look I need help because they'll be more than willing to help you okay so my next tip is that people might tell you that your first year doesn't count so a lot of the time um in universities the first year doesn't count towards your final degree mark um, and people hold the wrong belief that okay if that's the case the first year doesn't count doesn't matter what I do doesn't matter if I study doesn't matter if I go to lectures and that is so far from the truth so when I went certainly when I went to um, Farnham we were told that yes the first year doesn't count but it counts as a practice year you're learning how to study you're learning how to get good grades you're learning how to write reports and things like that um and it's so it's still really really important just because it doesn't give you your final grades doesn't mean you don't need to put the work into it it's kind of good in a way I suppose that it doesn't count because it gives you that year to really really like get to know university life and to understand what it's all about but it doesn't mean that it's just like a dossier and you don't have to do anything because if you do that when you go into the second year you're going to find that even harder and that year does count so yeah don't put too much pressure on yourself but at the same time it's really important to still work and to still try hard and to still you know make the most of the opportunities that you're given because it will give you an idea of how you're doing and what you need to work on for your second year. So another thing that I would definitely suggest trying to do especially if you're living away from home for university is to try and make a meal plan where you can. Um, I know it's not always easy and you might want to like sometimes go out with your friends or have something like a takeaway or something but you can't live on takeaways, believe me, you get to a point where one, you're running out of money and two, you feel crap because all you've been eating is rubbish food. Um, so when I was at Portsmouth, I would make a meal plan for myself, like at the, well, at the end of the week for the next week. Um, that would mean that I would then know what I needed to go and buy for, like food wise from the shops so I could budget my money. Um, it also meant that generally I was eating healthily because I was planning my meals in advance, I wasn't going and like buying out every time um, and also I saved money so you know I could, I was budgeting and not spending loads of money and also, also I felt better because um, I was eating like proper food. Um, obviously you're going to go off your meal plan sometimes and other times you know it's just not going to be like relevant but it was one of the biggest things that helped me especially with suffering from eating disorders having that meal plan there and being because I was away from home it was like the first time I'd had to like take charge of my eating for myself so having that meal plan there just gave me something to work on something to go by and yeah you know I could have the odd day where like my friends might say oh should we go and like get a baguette for lunch or something I'd be like oh okay let's do that but it wasn't every day and 
yeah I see so many people at uni that just live off like bought out lunches and going out for dinner in the evening or having takeaways and they would get to like halfway through the year and be like I've got no money left I feel rubbish because I haven't been eating properly um so yeah like once you've kind of started getting into it definitely try and make yourself a bit of a meal plan because I think it will help like in the long run of like learning to live like as an adult also I would definitely definitely recommend keeping an eye on your money it is very easy when you go to uni and all of a sudden you've got a student loan a student grant whatever it is um to think like oh my god I've got all this money like let's blow it let's go and like go out every night or like go and buy stuff that I wouldn't normally have bought and very very quickly you will realize that that money goes down very very fast you've got to pay things like rent you've got to buy food you've got to do bills you've got to pay for like textbooks and stuff for uni and although it looks like a lot to start with it isn't a lot so definitely keep an eye on it try and budget if you can um you will get into a like a routine of budgeting but just don't go and like blow it all at once just because it looks like a lot of money um so many people that i knew at uni would get to like the middle of the year and be like oh shit like i've run out of money i've, I've done what i'm gonna do they'd be like phoning their parents can like asking for help and that's great if you've got parents that can help but not everybody does so yeah just just be sensible with it like don't go to the extreme of like not doing anything you know you can still go out and have fun but just don't go crazy i think it's also important to accept that you're gonna have wobbles and that things are gonna go wrong um a lot of people myself included go to university for the first first time thinking it's going to be an amazing experience you're going to make loads of friends it's going to be awesome like living away from home and i think a lot of people get a bit of a wake-up call um yes it is great like I really enjoyed my first term at Portsmouth I had a great time at Farnham um but it's hard work especially if you're living away from home because you've got all of that to like learn as well as sort of doing the uni stuff so kind of go into it with realistic expectations you know you will have wobbles things will go wrong you'll lose your keys I did that and got locked out and panicked um you'll get a bad mark in a in a paper or an exam or something but it's not the end of the world it's it's life and things are meant to go wrong and things will go wrong so just I guess yeah set yourself realis realistic expectations don't think that everything's going to be like sunshine and roses um obviously don't go into it with like a pessimistic like frame of mind but you know it is still real life there are a lot of hurdles that you're going to have to overcome so just give yourself cut yourself a bit of slack and realize that if things go a bit wrong if you have a bit of a wobble it's not the end of the world it doesn't mean that you're not coping properly it's just getting used to like a whole new way of life and I would also say that it will take time to adjust to uni life people think that they can just be like plonked in it and get on with it and some people do some people adapt really well to it and that's great I definitely didn't I found it very very hard being away from home um all of a sudden having to do like everything for myself not having people around me that I knew like it's massive and yeah it took time it does take time and you know sometimes it's not right for you but you've just got to give it yeah give it time so you know if you're a few weeks in and you're thinking oh my god I can't do this I, I don't know what I'm doing I don't like it just try and like relax a bit I know it's easy to say but not as easy to do um and just like reassure yourself that it is going to take you time it, it's a massive step and it's a massive change so just yeah like make, be kind to yourself just let yourself kind of do what you need to do to get through it talk to people because other people are going to be struggling as well you're not the only one that's going to be feeling homesick or that's going to be struggling to do the washing or that's going to be finding it hard to cook um so chat to your friends chat to whoever you need to talk to and just give yourself time to settle into it because certainly for me like with well with Portsmouth I didn't give myself maybe enough time and with Farnham it probably took me like a good half a year even longer to like really get into it and like feel like that was the right thing that I was doing 
It can also take time to make friends. Again, people expect to go to university and to all of a sudden have loads and loads of friends. And it's just not always, that's not always the case. You may make friends during freshers and then actually you kind of end up drifting away from them and making other friends like as the year goes on. Um, certainly the people that I hang around with during freshers, I pretty much drifted away from most of them but when, once I'd like started my course I started to make friends on my course I started to make friends in like societies and stuff um, and yeah those were the people that I kind of am still friends with now I guess like at Farnham it took me a long time because I felt like the odd one out because I was a lot older than most people I was living at home um, for the first like few months I just thought like what am I doing I've not got any friends here really I don't know what's going on and then you just seem to like get into a bit of a groove and I started to make friends and yeah as I said the friends that I kind of developed a bit later on are people that I still talk to now so again give yourself time don't feel like the people that you hang around with in freshers have to be the people that you are like best buddies with because things change we'll meet new people and it's not a failing on either of your parts it's just you know you're getting used to like this whole new way of life and you're going to meet different people in different situations and some of them are going to stick around for you and some of them aren't so yeah don't worry too much about making friends because as long as you're joining in with stuff and doing stuff that you feel is like true to you you will meet people that you click with so my next tip is a kind of disability focused one i haven't really focused so much on university with a disability in this because i wanted to make it a bit more general if you want a video about um like doing university with disabilities and things like that I can look at making one um, but I did just want to add this one so if you have something like disabled student allowance and you are allocated a support worker or a mentor or something like that make sure you get to know them really well so for my three years I was lucky enough to have the same mentor and the same support worker and um, I got to know them both quite quickly um, it was I was kind of lucky that I had a group of friends who were quite happy for me to be pushed around with by my support worker like when they were around so we all got to know my support worker really well and it just made life so much better because she knew my needs I knew what she was like and I felt able to communicate with her about what I needed and yeah just getting to know her made my life so much easier at uni I wouldn't have been able to get through uni without her and I still keep in contact with her now you know it was three years that we like knew each other and she helped me so much um so I'm really pleased that we like got to know each other really well I don't know what uni is like now but I know my old uni you don't necessarily have the same support worker all the way through which can be more difficult but just make sure that whoever you've got supporting you you try and communicate with them tell them what you need they're there to help you and the best way that they can help you is if you tell them you know how they what they need to do so yeah definitely just keep that communication open try and build a good rapport with them and you will definitely find that the better the rapport with them the better that they can help you the next point i think applies to both living away and living at home but i would just say don't forget about your home friends and family um it's a bit of a difficult one because you want to like invest in your new like venture you want to kind of make sure that you're focusing on what you're doing now and not getting like pulled back too much but at the same time I lost contact with a lot of like my home friends when I went off to university and when you come back for like the holidays it's really nice to know that your home friends are still there um some of mine I kept contact with they would come and visit me at uni I would go and visit them um and then when I came back for the holidays I still had that nice group of friends that I could like meet up with so it, I think it's about finding a balance and again the same it's the same with your family I mean I kept in contact with my family a lot when I moved away and I came back home quite often and I do wonder if I came back home a bit too often and that's what made it made me find it more difficult to move away because I would keep coming back and seeing like how much I loved home and then I would find it harder to go back so you, it's finding a balance and it's going to be different for different people but definitely you know don't forget your family and friends because they're going to be there to support you they're still going to be there after you know uni's finished and you're going into like the world of work um 
so yeah just make sure I think finding the balance and making sure you've kind of got a good balance between doing university but also your home life. The next thing I would say is that if you're living at home don't worry that your university experience is going to be different to everybody else's. When I went to Farnham I was living at home and I was really worried that I would be the odd one out. Um, majority of people, there were a few people that lived at home as well but the majority of people were living on campus and I just thought I'm not gonna like feel part of it, I'm not gonna like fit in and actually it didn't really matter even when I was at Portsmouth we had a few people that lived at home and they fitted in just as well um they would sometimes like come and do the evening stuff with us and then maybe stay with one of us um Farnham there wasn't like huge amounts of evening stuff so it didn't matter to me too much um and the friends that I made you know we used to do stuff during the day so we'd like go um, out for lunch or we'd go to a cafe um, or we'd meet up like after you know for dinner or stuff like that so there's definitely ways around it and just because you're not living on campus doesn't mean that you're going to be missing out you know completely um, and I certainly learned that like as the time went on I thought actually I don't feel any different to them just because they're living in Farnham and I'm not I still feel part of everything um, and actually I just thought this works better for me like if I was living on campus I may not have stayed as long because I may not have coped um, so you've got to do what's best for you and you can be as involved as you want so just don't worry like you're doing you're doing you they're doing them and there's no reason why you can't be as involved as everybody else and then my last tip which is possibly a bit of a strange one to finish on but it, I just want to say that it's okay if university isn't for you. I felt terrible when I left uh, Portsmouth University, when I dropped out. I felt like an absolute failure. I thought everybody else is doing uni. I can't cope. Like, I must be, there must be something wrong with me. Um, I felt awful, really, really awful that I had dropped out. And actually, now when I look back at it, it was the right thing for me. I, it wasn't the right university, it wasn't the right course, I didn't like where I lived. Just nothing was working for me and it just proved like later on the fact that I've been able to do university and finish it just proves that it's about finding the right place for you, the, the right way of like living, the right way of studying and that can take time. So if you're at university and you've given it a try and you're thinking this just really isn't for me, there is no shame in dropping out and saying look this isn't right for me you know it's much better for you to pull out than to carry on for three years being miserable and doing something that you're not happy with so yeah I mean I think most of the pressure came from myself but just don't feel bad if you've given something a good try and you decide that it's not right for you because at the end of the day it's your life you need to do what is right for you and if whatever you know if that university isn't right then that's okay you've tried it you haven't failed you know you've tried it it's been an experience and you're learning from it so yeah don't suffer in silence if you're really struggling and you don't want to be there anymore tell somebody and you know do something about it and find something that you know is something that you want to do so there we have it, lots and lots of tips for starting uni and getting through your first year. I hope you have enjoyed it and you found it helpful. If you have and you want to see more content from me, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to press the bell as well because then you'll be notified every time I upload a video. Leave me a comment, let me know if you've got any tips for starting uni, let me know if you're starting uni this year. Um, and also let me know if there's any other videos that you would like to see, whether they're to do with university, like anything to do with university or something completely different, let me know because I'm always after your suggestions and I will see you all in another video very soon. Bye!